Hello and welcome to South Asia Focus. I'm Smita Prakash. Today we look at the presidential elections in Sri Lanka, the island nation that lies south of India went to polls last Thursday. In a most unexpected result, two-time incumbent president, the powerful Mahinda Rajapaksha, lost to the common opposition candidate Maitripala Sirisena by a decisive margin in a free and fair election. To discuss the unexpected election result and what it means to South Asia, we have with us senior journalist and an expert on Sri Lankan affairs, S. Venkat Narayan. But before that, here's a brief report on how the people of Sri Lanka voted. The United Opposition Metripala Sirisena of the NDF won 51% of the votes, defeating sitting President Mahinda Rajapaksa, who polled 47.6% votes, ending Rajapaksa's 10-year tenure as Sri Lanka's president. Tamils and Christians, who constitute 20% of the electorate, proved to be the game-changers, who probably voted overwhelmingly against Rajapaksa. The man who was known to rule the island nation with an iron hand was accused of cronism and graft charges. Raja Paksa, who called for elections two years before schedule, conceded defeat immediately and Siri Sena took oath of office, announcing that he would be just a one-term president and would bring in a new foreign policy. 63-year-old Sri Sena has been in politics for over four decades, having escaped five attempts on his life by the LTTE. The seventh president of Sri Lanka, like his predecessor, is also a strong believer in astrology. Thank you for speaking with us. Um, I'd like to begin by asking, how did this stupendous victory happen? I mean, who expected it three months back that an opposition that was just cobbled together uh, would bring in this victory and the strong man of Sri Lanka would be defeated? Well, absolutely. So there was a coup d'etat. You know, Ranil Vikram Singh and uh, Chandrika Kumaratunga joined hands and decided to oust Rajapaksa from office. So they were negotiating with uh, Maitripala Sirisena for some time and uh, Sirisena waited till Rajapaksa announced the date for the elections. The next morning he just walked out and became the joint common opposition candidate. So, he managed to gather support from 46 different groupings and outfits and all that, that included the Tamils from Jaffna and the Muslims Muslim. and uh, Christians and people who are very unhappy with Rajapaksha's style of functioning. You nearly had 30 ministers and MPs from Rajapaksha's he government ditching him and yeah. crossing over because they saw the mood of the people because after he defeated the LTT in May 2009, Rajapaksha organized a presidential election again two years ahead of his six year term and ensured that he got a majority and formed, uh, came to power. And three months later, he conducted ordered a parliamentary poll and got an absolute majority. And he stitched up a two-thirds majority to bring about amazing constitutional amendments in Sri Lanka. The then constitution had stipulated that anybody can contest only twice for the presidential uh, power, post. He Changed that. He, he changed, changed that it completely. Okay. Not only that, you know, he destabilized the entire constitutionality of that. You know, he he took power in his own hands. He could nominate personally anybody he wanted to all the constitutional positions. Right. This is what brings me to the point that if he was going so strong, why did he call an election two years ahead? Was it just this uh, this a basis of this astrology, the uh, astrological prediction by his favorite astrologer. How important is astrology in deciding all this? He is very superstitious. Mm. He consults his astrologer and goes to Tirupati every time mm. he needs some help from God Almighty. You see, what happened a few weeks before he announced the election date for the presidency, there were provincial elections in two provinces. 
and he was thinking that he was going to get a pretty good majority but mm. that did not happen mm. then he realized that his popularity has been waning so before it gets worse he thought he waited till the constitution allowed him to complete four years only after that a an incumbent president can order a presidential election he used that he realized that if he waited any longer you know he could lose the election but he did not anticipate that somebody an important man within his own party was going to ditch him and 24 right. hours after that so then why did uh, the opposition uh, when they were trying to find a candidate to fight rajapakse why didn't vikrama singh go himself why not kumaratunga because they have the experience why choose somebody new i mean it worked for them yes but why choose somebody who was a part of rajapakse's team wasn't that a gamble it was not uh, smita because ranil lost to rajapaksa in 2005 Chandrika is not personally very popular, mm. even though her father founded the ruling SLFP and her chemistry with Rajapaksha was not right. And if either of them had fought elections, there was no chance of Chandrika becoming, you know, going to the opposition and doing it because she had sentimental attachment to the party which was founded by her father okay. and she had a considerable following within uh, the SLFP. So they figured that uh, if they pulled out somebody powerful within the SLFP mm -hmm. and made him a common opposition candidate and ensured support from the Muslims, from the Tamils and from other groups, you know, it was going to be a devastating combination. Is this the primary focus going to be or the first job that he's going to do is one the collective humiliation of the Tamils that you talked about and the grand isolation of Sri Lanka, international isolation. Are these the two primary things that uh, Sri Sena will have to tackle? I am afraid so because he, in his <coughs> manifesto he says in the first hundred days in office he is going to dilute the powers of the executive presidency because through the 18th amendment Rajapaksha seized control of every constitutional position in that country. So he's going to change the constitution he, first? He has to change Which the constitution. Which he's already announced that only one term president he is. He so, said that. Yeah. He said that. and uh, But he needs a two-third majority in parliament to make major changes. But with this rainbow coalition, he doesn't have that. He right does now. not have. But the SLFE MPs may be encouraged to support him for the simple reason that if he, they do not support the amendment, he said, I am going to call the election. Again? P parliamentary election. Parliamentary election. Okay. Which is due after hmm. the 20th of April, because hmm. the five-year term hmm. there of the parliament expires on the 20th April of this year. Hmm. So the MPs need to be in office to complete their term okay. to qualify for pensions. And Fighting elections is an expensive business and nobody wants to go to the elections before. The so, he is going over. to you know, cobble together some kind of a majority in order to have these two issues dealt with. Yeah. Then comes this thing about China. Now, the relationship that uh, Rajapakse uh, cobbled together with China um, has come in for a lot of criticism from the opposition. Uh, whether it is uh, China funding the Hamban Tota or whether the Colombo project 1 billion or something like that. Now, th there's the, the Rajapaksa family involved in uh, in all these uh, financial dealings. How is he going to deal with Because if he starts an investigation into this, it's going to muddy the waters as far as China-Sri Lanka relationship is concerned. So, will he be walking on coals in dealing with this uh, relationship? No, Ranil Vikramasinghe, who is now the Prime Minister, has declared during the campaigning that the Colombo port agreement which was signed by the Chinese president himself when he was in September, in September that's right. it is going to be scrapped on the grounds that it will harm the environment. Mm. You see Rajapaksha brought more than six billion dollars from China and five billion of them on a loan, loan with a huge, huge interest. interest rate. So Sri Lanka even though on paper, it has attained 7% growth, much more than India, one of the best performing economies, but mm. all on borrowed money. Mm. 
you know. So, it was a part of the election campaign that the Colombo ports agreement, uh, you know, China was supposed to build it, it will be scrapped. So, they will have to honor that. They are likely to do that. But is India watching this very carefully? Because there is national security of India also concerned with this. Yeah, right? absolutely. And you know, the, the use of the ports in Sri Lanka has been a, a, a thorn in the flesh for India. Absolutely. Particularly because the Chinese submarines, nuclear armed submarines were being allowed mm. to, you know, park, park them. themselves in at least twice and India did not like that. Mm. And Ajit Dovala, the Indian, um, you know, national security advisor had met Rajapaksha and his brother and everybody said, listen, this is against our uh, national security. It's Which way is the Indian relationship with Sri Lanka now going to change with Sirisena there at the helm? Um, as you know, in 2013, the Indian Prime Minister did not even attend the Chogam, the Commonwealth uh, heads of government meet in Colombo. Uh, it's been a rocky road with Rajapaksha. How, is that going to change with Sirisena at the helm? It is going to change for several reasons. You know, after Rajapaksha got elected to a second term, is he has been, you know, his dealings with India have not been straight. Mm. India has been saying, okay, you give a fair deal to the Tamils. Now that the war is over, let there be conciliation. Mm. Mm. And he told India and the international community, yes, yes, I am going to do it. But he did nothing. Whereas, he used the victory to get himself re-elected, but you know, a victory over the rebels, it has an expiry date, my dear. Hmm. It got over after four years. If he had given a fair deal to the Tamils, maybe he would have been elected for a third time, hmm. even though people didn't like it. But imagine what would have happened if Rajapaksha was elected for a third term in the UN Human Rights Council in Geneva, Sri Lanka's human rights record will come up for a hearing in March this year. Which way will India vote? India will, well, you know, this guy Sirisena had said that I am going to order an impartial domestic investigation and take suitable action on those who found guilty. Mm -hmm. But Rajapaksha himself was the commander in chief of, is the, you know, the president is the commander in chief of the uh, armed force in that country. And his brother was the security chief. I mean, he was a Gotabaya. Gotabaya. So, these two gentlemen and at least a dozen officers of the security forces would be found guilty. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Venkat. Thank you, Brian.